things done and all your conflicts pass you may have come through Christ alone you may have come through Christ alone then stand entire at last Amen. <clears throat> this morning's scripture reading will come from the book of Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 Matthew 11 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Good morning to everyone. What a beautiful day. Nice temperatures. Great to be out with brethren, with brethren worshiping the God that created this world. We had 10 at uh, De Gaulle Thursday night, and I know some went other nights as well, but it, it would be nice, uh, perhaps tomorrow night, we had that many or more to go to Franklin Street. And the only thing it takes, I realize sometimes we have obligations, but not every night. Sometimes it just takes, I'm going. And, that's, and then maybe we can have that many go to a crowd their gospel meeting and support the brethren in the effort to spread the gospel and also be built up. Amen. Thursday night, uh, Greg Dismute preached at the Gulf, and he was a fellow classmate of mine at Memphis. So that was great to see him again and be with other brethren that also knew. And uh, one that actually uh, had been working at the place I did years ago doing mission work. And so we got to talk for a long time. Actually, those that were with me finally sat down and I finally said, I got to go. They're, they're, they're waiting on me. But I hope that you will just take the time. Uh, let's go tomorrow night. Uh, get together and if you... If you want to let me ride with you, that'd be great too. But just make the effort to go if you can. When they going to tell you, Caitlin had bought me uh, last year uh, the, for the uh, one for each day uh, a saying from the Charlie Brown set, and one that I recently saw. It, it was Charlie Brown and his sister Sally. Sally had come in. She said, "I've got something to tell." And then she looked out the door, both ways, make sure nothing's, nobody's out there. Then she rises up, looks out the window. And Charlie Brown looks at her. She says, we prayed in school today. And so don't, even people that are not Christians, get the idea of the things that are being taken away from us. And that's very true, what that one little page said. Uh, our values are being destroyed. Brother, we need to pray about those things and always uh, stand up for what's right and try to encourage others to do likewise. One of the greatest concepts taught through the New Testament, and really in the Old Testament with all the prophecies of Christ, but the great concept that is taught more than any other is the love of Christ. We see how much that he loves us. We know, as we've already mentioned uh, in prayer and uh, maybe uh, in prayer again at the Lord's Supper, or at least in other words, of the death of Jesus on the cross for our salvation. That blood that cleanses us, washes our sins away. Man could not save himself, but the love of Jesus Christ could. And aren't we thankful for that? Because of that blood, we can be saved. Notice in John 3.16, a verse that you're very, very familiar with, 
but it says so much. For God so loved the world that, what? He gave his only begotten son, the one born of a virgin, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Now that's not teaching faith only. It has nothing to do with that. But it's about our faith in believing on the one that came and loved us so much that he was willing to give his life on that cruel cross of Calvary. That's what we need to understand every day of our life. Jesus loves me. Sometimes we get the idea in our lives, nobody cares about me. Nobody understands me. Jesus understands us. Jesus loves us. Sometimes it may be brethren just may not understand because I'm confident the brethren love one another. But sometimes we may not understand each other, but Jesus does. Our God does. And we always have the privilege and the power of prayer because of the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it's easy to love those that love us, but it's rather a little bit harder, maybe real hard sometimes, to love those that don't love us. And we all would have to admit that every relationship you see in life is not going to be a cozy one. We might hope that it would be that way, but some people just don't want to get along. But now notice this verse in Romans 5, 8. But God, not us, commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But now we got to go back and think about ourselves. He died for us. Why did he die for us? Not because we were already saved. No, he, we, he would not have needed to die if that were the case. But he died for us because we were out in, living in sin, and we were lost. Before we became Christians, we, we know that we were living a life that was not pleasing to God. It doesn't necessarily mean everybody was out living and drinking and partying. Some may have been. But there's the fact that we were outside of Christ. We bury that old man. Point of baptism, and we'll talk more about that later. But we also notice Ezekiel 18, 20. And this is very plain to those that would teach that we carry the sins of others. I had uh, somebody call me one time, one lady, and they were in a car talking back and forth. And they I don't know all the why of it. I, I can guess some things. But they wanted to know how we bear the sins of those generations before us. They were reading some other passages and misunderstanding or very likely didn't understand the Bible very well at all and were trying to make it mean something that it didn't. And this is the verse I gave them and they, she said, thank you and they hung up. I would like to have been there when they read it to see what their thoughts were. Probably not what they thought it would be. And it's very straightforward. Ezekiel says this, and you can't miss it. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Oh, I don't bear the sins of my parents or grandparents or of my spouse or of my children and likewise for each of them as well. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. See, we, we have something that we're going to be in need of because we all sin, don't we? Notice Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. That's where we were. But the free gift of God is eternal life. Where? In Jesus Christ, our Lord. But now it's in him. And we're going to come to more of that as we go through the sermon. It is in Jesus Christ. So man couldn't save himself, but our Lord made it possible that we could be saved in Jesus Christ. You can't be saved outside of Christ. That's going to be an important point as we go through our sermon. And lastly, in this section, really before we get to the main points, Hebrews 2, 9, but we see Jesus, the one that was in heaven, who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death 
crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, what? Should taste of death for every man. Willing to leave heaven and be made a little lower than the angels. He walked this earth. He faced the same temptations that we did. Of course, we know without sin. And we're not going to do that, but we do have that perfect example that we're going to strive to follow. And we have the blood of Jesus after we become Christians that continues to cleanse us as we strive to walk in his way. Never perfect, but forgiven. That's, that's the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice that he made. But now with that being established, let's look at some things that we must do now because of those facts of what Jesus did for us. This last passage and really all those other ones. Let's make some points concerning that. Something that we must do. See, it's not all on God's part. And we were having so many comments in class, I thought about making one. But I did make some comments, but I thought maybe I should just keep on talking. But some people go to the book of Ephesians, were saved by faith, not by works. Well, that's true. But if you keep reading the passages, we're created for good works. You've got to put them together, don't you, in the right manner. Not take a verse out of context. But we must forsake self. You know, that's something that man has trouble with, don't we? We have trouble because most people want to live for self. What pleases me? And we may struggle sometimes even after we become Christians because of the life that we used to live. If we're around the wrong people, it can pull us back toward that way. You've got to be careful. If we're watching the wrong kind of TV programs and movies, it can pull us back toward that way and a host of other things. But let's move on and notice in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. That's what we're talking about. But unto him which died for them and rose again. That's who we're supposed to be living for, no longer for myself. That's what I was doing when I was in the world. But I became a Christian. Now I need to change that. I need to be living for God. I need to be living for my Lord Jesus Christ that died for me on that cruel cross. And I do have a reason for living. I do have somebody that cares about me to the point he was willing to die for me. I believe that's caring for us, don't you? We have a God that cares about us. Matthew 16, 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. See, we have a cross to bear ourselves. Now, we can help each other in life as we need that. We understand that. But the point here is that we have some responsibilities as well. I can't dump them on somebody else. The only way I can live for Christ is by me making that decision. Others may encourage me, but ultimately, I had to make the decision. Some had encouraged me when I was younger to become a Christian. Didn't do it. But finally, I had to make up my own mind I was going to do that. Same thing with you. You had to make up your own mind that you were going to serve God. Then in 1 John 2, verse 15 through 17, now notice, this was written to Christians. So hear what John has to say. Love not the world. That means a Christian has to resist this temptation. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, what? The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but what? is of the world. But now there's something else, and the world passes away. Those things that you might have done, you might enjoy sin for a season, but the world's going to pass away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God, what? Abideth forever. That's what I want to have a part in. 
But now, John wrote that to Christians for a reason. He understands even when we become a child of God, Satan's going to keep tempting us. He tempted Jesus. You think he won't tempt his followers? Well, of course he will. So we must be ready for that onslaught that Satan's going to throw at us. Number two, to learn of him. Once we direct our lives toward God, once we're baptized, that's not the finish line. And I am afraid there are people in the brotherhood who have taken it that way. Well, I was baptized. Wonderful, wonderful. The angels in heaven rejoiced when you did that. But that doesn't mean you just go on about your way. No, you need to start learning more about God, don't you? That's what we need to do. Notice this. John 6, verse 45. It is written. That's how Jesus answers Satan every time, is it? And the prophets, and they shall be all what? Taught of God. It's not going to come to you some miraculous way. They are taught of God. Every man, therefore, it singles it out, that hath heard, you have to hear the gospel, and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. See, we have to learn the will of God. How are you going to come to God? How are you going to come to the Lord if you don't know about it? Or if you don't know how? To do so. So we must know the will of God. How are you going to teach others the gospel if you don't know it? We have to know the will of God. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, verse 30. This is the one that James read for us. And such a beautiful passage. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Ever feel like that? Ever felt like that? I would say most of us have at some point in life, if not all of us. And I will give you rest. You won't rest. You've got to come to the Lord. You've got to come to the right place. Take my yoke upon you. And what? Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And what? If you learn of Jesus and come to him, ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus wants us to know about him and come to him. He's willing to give us that rest. You can rest when you know you're in the Lord. Not that you don't work. We've already covered that point. But we can go to bed at night knowing when we lay our head down, no matter what may happen, if I'm in Jesus Christ faithfully serving him, even if I die, I know that I've got a place far better. That's what Jesus wants to give to us. And then we see in the book of Acts 2, 37, this is an important question. Usually we look at verse 38, and, we, and that's great. We need to. But now when they heard this, what? What did they hear? The gospel. For the first time, you've crucified the Christ. That's pretty straightforward, too. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? How did they do this? They were taught about Jesus Christ, the one they crucified. And there's a great sense in which we crucified the Lord too because it was for our sins that he died as well, wasn't it? He died for my sins and your sins. Everybody that has ever lived of the of age of accountability, Jesus has died <coughs> for them. And then third, to live a new life. Like I said earlier, not just to be baptized. You do become a new person. You buried what? That old man. He's not supposed to be living anymore. But now you're supposed to live a new life. You can't just be baptized and still live the same way that you used to. Because you have a new life to live. That new birth that takes place. In the book of Romans now. We see verses 3 and 4. And we saw where salvation was in Christ already. But let's read a little bit more in the Bible about that. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, what? Into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Why is that important? Because that's where he shed his blood. John 19, verse 48. Oh, you contact that blood at the point of baptism, don't you? Therefore, because of that fact, therefore we are buried with him. Who? Christ. 
by baptism into death like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we learn something that we must do. We know that we're supposed to be in Christ. And here's one thing I said we will go more into it earlier. We read a verse that said to, to be in Christ, but at that point it didn't tell you how to get in Christ. And some people will do that about other subjects and they will take it. See, that's what the Bible says. Oh, they haven't read the other passages on it. So you want to know how to get into Christ, you've got to look at the Bible and see what it says. In Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, but that's not enough. That's not enough. There's a lot of people, even today, that will hear the gospel proclaimed, but will walk out the door of those church buildings lost. And hear these sayings of mine, and do with them. I will liken unto him a wise man, if you do what you've learned, which built his house upon a rock, not the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. We understand what that means. And beat upon that house, and it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock, the rock, Jesus Christ. That's the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ. He died for us. We are buried in baptism into his death, and we have the one that died to save us. Then we read in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no, no, no sin. Jesus never had sin, never did, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. There's that phrase again, in him. And we've already seen how we get into him. So we must be in Christ, and we must do the will of God. Then also, we learn number four, tell others. That's another thing that we must do. There's a lot of people that, get, that know the plan of salvation, know quite a bit about the Bible. But do you realize if you're not telling others about the gospel, you're not doing what the Lord said. Go into all the world and what? Preach the gospel to every creature. What did Jesus send his disciples out doing? Teaching the word of God. That's what he did. And he's told us to do the same thing. Go into all the world. So not just knowing the gospel and keeping it to ourselves. No, that won't work. We've got something else that we must do. But you know something? It shouldn't be that we feel like we're being pushed to do it. It should be something we have a great desire to do. We know it's the right thing to do. We know that it pleases our Heavenly Father, and we love to do it. Not push to do it, but have that desire to do it. That's a tremendous difference in how you do something. But now we also notice, according to that, Luke 24, verses 46 and 47, and said unto him, thus it is written, you're going to learn something else now, it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. There's power. The grave couldn't hold him. And that repentance and remission of sins, what? Should be preached in his name, where? Among all nations that started at Jerusalem. We actually already noticed that in Acts 2. It started there. We are to continue that to the very best of our ability. And there's some that we support that we don't might not even go to that place. But we've sent them to go and supported them. Still spreading the gospel in places that we haven't been. That's one reason it's so needed to support missionaries. And not take them out of the field, but put them in the field. And also we notice in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me. Why? that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I 
ought to speak. Now, the ambassadors were the apostles, not us. But we are to teach boldly, not be ashamed of it. Well, they may not like this. I, I may say it, but I'm going to say it like I don't, I'm not that strong in it. Not being ugly with anybody, but knowing this is the will of God. This is what he wants us to do. This is what we've been commanded to do. And we could look at the Apostle Paul. He was beaten and shipwrecked, left for dead on different occasions. That didn't stop him from pre preaching the gospel, did it? It didn't stop Peter and John. They kept on preaching the word of God. Even though people oppose them, people may oppose us. It's not to that extent, at least at this moment. But nevertheless, we always preach the word of God. And then lastly, the last verse I'm going to use this morning, 2 Corinthians 4.13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, do you believe? And therefore, I have spoken. We also believe, therefore, speak. Can that be said of us? Paul said it in writing to the Corinthians. Can that be said of us? I believed, I obeyed, therefore I speak. You have to know it first. You have to live it. And then you have to teach it to others. When we do that, our life is different than when we don't do those things. We don't have that confidence anymore. Oh, you could be driving and, you know, somebody almost hits you and you, it comes to mind, what if they hadn't, it killed me. And I'm not faithful to God. Not a good situation, is it? That's happened to many people. I've heard of even a person that they thought was, maybe within the next two weeks, he's probably going to become a Christian was killed in the car accident. He still died lost, didn't he? Even though he knew some about the Bible and was close.